we are started. Here it is, the first IWG Masterclass by Yuki Takata. What I'd like to do is just give a brief introduction to our instructor today. So Yuki is one of the co-founders of the International Whistlers Guild. He has won various awards at international whistling competitions since 2010, including first place male all round at the 2019 Masters of Musical Whistling competition in California. In recent years, Yuki has been active as a whistling educator and has given a TEDx talk titled Potential of Whistling as a Musical Instrument at the University of Tokyo in 2015. So thanks to everyone who has joined. Again, please use the chat if you have any questions and I'll, I'll try to make sure to relay them to Yuki. And otherwise, I hope you join me in uh, learning all about whistling and warbling from the master himself, Yuki Takata. Yuki. Thank you, Mike. And thank you to everyone who is here today. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited to see all of you here, and I'm also very excited to see new faces that uh, I'm meeting for the first time. Uh, thank you so much. And um, if I go too fast at some point, please tell me in the chat. I can stop and clarify, or I can speak slower. So if ever I'm going too fast, let me know. Uh, I'm just going to quickly start with a performance. <laughs> Isn't she lovely by Stevie Wonder? And um, I used some warbling here and there. I think you heard it. And I know many of you are new to this thing called warbling. And you're probably very excited and curious and worried about warbling. One thing I do want to say is that you do not need to warble. It is just one of those tools that you can add to your toolbox. But without warbling, you can whistle beautifully. And the very simple proof is, I'm going to give you a proof. <laughs> um, wait, sorry, that's personal information. There you go. Um, do you see the screen now, Mike? Okay. It's just uh, it's just slowly coming up. I just see YT there actually. Huh. I hope it's gonna come up. Let me let me stop presenting and try to go yeah. again. Uh, 
right. How's this now? Yeah, now it's coming up. I see a list. I see a, a table list here. All right. So do you see warblers and non-warblers? Uh, yes. So on the left, warblers. On the right, okay. non-warblers. Yeah. So great. Here are the famous whistlers. Um, famous as in famous because they are big pop musicians or jazz musicians, or famous because they have won whistling competitions. And you see, <coughs> excuse me, so many big name whistlers like Toots Thielmans, Andrew Bird, Laura Pergolizzi, Carolyn Kaufman. All these people do not warble. And they have made some sort of career with warbling or have won competitions. Uh, no, not, not with warbling, sorry, with whistling or won competitions, whistling competitions at some point. So what this means is that to become a big, good whistler, you don't really have to be able to warble. That's one thing I really want to um, emphasize today. And then, uh, let's see. There was a question about what warbling is useful for um, in the questions that you sent us beforehand. I would say it's good for instrumental music. So music that is usually played with instruments or when you want to imitate an instrument like a, a flute or something like that. When you're thinking about whistling as an extension of vocal music, singing, then I would say you don't always have to use warbling or even stay away from warbling. That's my personal philosophy. Um, now. Uh, that being said, um, let's move on to the definition of warbling. The first part, I'm going to talk about all these, you know, difficult stuff. And then from the second part onwards, you will hear more about how exactly to do these techniques. So it's going to come. So don't worry, just deal with me talking about a bit of geeky stuff about warbling. All right. OK, sorry. Uh, who here today uh, needs translation in what language? If you can understand English very well, then please, you know, don't say anything. Uh, I know there are people from Italy, uh, Brazil, maybe Mexico, Japan. If you need translation, please type in the chat. I'm going to do my best on my Google spreadsheet to translate. If there is no request, then since I know there is one Italian person, one Brazilian person, one Jap no, two Japanese people, uh, oops, sorry, uh, I'm going to keep it to this setting. Oops. Yep. All right, let's go to the definition of warbling. OK, here it says, definition of warbling by Yuki. There is no other definition of warbling so far. Warbling is a term that refers to the various techniques, different techniques used in several human whistling styles including but not limited to pucker, palatal, uh, I can't do palatal, teeth, and throat whistling. OK, I tried. I couldn't. I sometimes can. Um, to create a similar distinct sounding effect by instantaneously switching the shape and or size of the resonance chamber inside your mouth without stopping the airflow. This is the most important, without stopping the airflow. In musical whistling, warbling is used to articulate clearly between two or more consecutive notes and is often used to interpret musical notations such as legato, trill, tremolo, and or for, uh, for ornamentation. 
And what warbling is not, this is important. Uh, the font is small. Let me try to make this a bit bigger. Okay. Warbling is not, does not equal slur, does not equal legato, does not equal trill, does not equal tremolo. It is a different technique from glottal stop, tonguing, or vibrato. All these are musical um, technique, technical terms. If you're not familiar with Western musical tradition, uh, you can note them down and look them up later. I'll explain a little more in a bit. Uh, but warbling is not equal to any of these. They are related, but not the same. Okay. And then now let's talk about how warbling is different from other articulations. Articulation is how you start and end a note or how you move from one note to another. Slur, uh, well, it says a stigma, but it is not. It's a, it's a mistranslation here. Slur is when there is no gap between the two notes that you whistle. It's all connected. Glottal stop is when you stop the breath, uh, stop the breath airflow with your throat. You hear the difference. Tonguing is when you use your tongue to do the same thing. Okay, there is a gap between the first note and the second note, and you hear an attack. Now, legato tonguing is when you make this gap infinitely small, but there is still a gap. So they're almost connected, but not quite. And then finally, there's warbling. You see here how the note is immediately switching and it's connected. So if this is happening, everything that sounds like this is warbling. There are many different ways to do it, but everything that sounds like this is warbling. For example, um, even when you do finger whistling, hi. Ah. you hear, hear the you know sudden change in the note? So it, the, the way you do it doesn't matter. As long as it sounds exactly like this is warbling, okay? And um, let's talk about the different types of warbling. Um, here I need to explain a little about how whistling works, okay. Is there anyone here who is not a pucker whistler? Pucker meaning. Is there anyone who is who mainly does palatal whistling or teeth whistling? Please type in the chat if there is. If not, then I will only explain about pucker whistling today. Okay, great. So, yeah, Yuki, I, I guess it's up to you, but if people watch this afterwards that aren't uh, pucker whistlers, then maybe it might help to explain ah, the other ones. Up to you. Okay, that is that is a very good point. Um, I'll explain it briefly. Yeah. Uh, let's see. 
I am going to do a little bit of drawing. Which I should be able to from here. So this is like a side cut of your mouth. You have your, uh, where's my pen? Okay, you have your teeth, right? You have your gum and your palate, hard palate, and you have your lower gum. Uh -huh. You have your lips, something like this. And then this is your tongue. OK. And how whistling works. This is the science physics of whistling. There is a sink. Uh, sorry, this is a source source. And there is OK, this this lip is very badly, poorly drawn. And there is the sink. Source and sink. Source. Sink. Oh. Okay. And the space in between here, this space is the resonance chamber. So this is your instrument. Okay. And the, the chamber, the, the size of the chamber determines the pitch of your whistling, how high or low your whistling is. So when you're whistling very low, your tongue will be like this so that there will be more space here, right? And if you're whistling higher notes, your tongue will all the way be up here, or sorry. Your tongue will be all the way here so that the space, resonance space is very small and the sink is moving here. You kind of understand what's going on? OK, so this is the basic about how whistling works. And now let's talk about warbling. There is a couple of ways to change, um, do, do warbling. Um, one is the chamber disrupting type. What that means is you use your tongue to completely change the airflow inside your mouth. For example, if your tongue touches your palate in the middle, and the air is going to the sides of your tongue out, then that's a different shape of air chamber from when your tongue is touching your lower teeth or gums. Okay, so that is one way to do it. I'm breaking the air chamber inside the mouth. And Another type is called, uh, how do I call it? Source changing. What that means is, so this is the source, right? So this is like the entrance of the air for the instrument. And if you bring the source here immediately, the source moves to here. So the instrument becomes suddenly smaller. You push your tongue forward and the instrument becomes suddenly smaller. So that sounds like. This is another type. And then the third type is, is very difficult to um, demonstrate. I can't demonstrate it, so I think I'm going to share um, a YouTube uh, video. And how do I? Okay. Can you see uh, Luke Janssen? Yes. Okay. 
So he's a palatal whistler, and he does sync changing warbling. That amazing. Uh, he he won the 2009 championship, I think. So yeah, so those are the three major types of um, sorry uh, warbling categories of warbling, I could say. Okay. And uh, so that's basically the end of the first part of today. Um, it was a lot of you know technical explanations and science and all that. Does anyone have any questions? Please type in the chat if you have any questions, if you're confused so far. I know this is like a lot of new stuff and it's almost rocket science. No one has ever explained this before, except for <laughs> me and my uh, other rocket whistling scientist. <laughs> we do have one question coming up from David. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you're typing, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I think for the if if we're um, if we're just asking for questions and you write that you have one, then maybe you could unmute yourself if it is easier. Yeah, that's that's, um, but, that's all right. but up to you, yeah. David. But if you do have a question for anybody else, please mention it in the chat and we'll. Yeah, I figured yeah. I would. Uh, I'll, I'll type it out as well after I finish asking it. Um, okay. So that it's there's a record. Um, so you mentioned uh, interrupting the airflow by touching the, or rather changing the, the location of the um, source mm -hmm. by touching the tongue to the roof of your mouth and then allowing the air to flow around the tongue. So it'd be say the, the tip of your tongue would be touching the roof of your mouth. If you can see what, what I'm doing here. Yeah. Uh, and then the air flows around the tongue yes. and out. Okay. It's just making sure I got the, the 3D understanding of that right. OK, OK. I will go into more details about each single one in the next section. OK. Yeah. All right. I guess I, I guess I had j just a quick one on top of that, Yuki. So mm -hmm. I think I've heard of people also touching their tongue to their cheek. Is that the same idea as touching your tongue to the roof of your mouth? That is. A very good question. This is the kind of warbling that I am not sure if it is referring to one of the warblings I know or if it's completely different. Because when you describe what's happening inside your mouth, it's difficult. <laughs> and what you're feeling or what you think you're feeling may not be what is happening inside your mouth. So I'm not very clear about this particular one that you mentioned just now. OK. Sorry about that. Yeah. No, no, it's all good. We had another question from Brian, Brian Crowley. Yeah. Would you classify vibrato as warbling? And how does that fit in here? OK, very good question. Vibrato is not warbling. It's very simple. OK, um, because the reason is vibrato is a continuous fluctuation of the pitch or the volume of whistling and it's continuing it does not uh, the pitch is not interrupted and it is also uh, um, always between the two same notes or two same pitches it goes back and forth because it's a vibration that's where the word vibrato comes from so
right? So there's no interruption like You hear the difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And David just added on to that question. Austin also has one, but I'll just do this first. Um, yeah. he, he's just wanting to clarify, I guess, if vibrato is sort of the same thing as a faster slur. Uh, in the way that I explained earlier, yes. But in musical, con uh, as a musical concept, it is completely different. Slur is going between multiple notes that are written separately on the sheet. Whereas vibrato is the same note but prolonged and you're just moving the pitch on that same note. So this is more of a musical theory difference rather yeah. than a scientific or physical difference. Yeah, very good. Okay. Uh, next question from Austin here. Yep. Something that he's wondered for a while is, uh, you know, if you have a shorter tongue, uh, you know, you might be worried that you might not be capable of doing some of these things. Do you think you're maybe at a disadvantage just due to the physiological <laughs> makeup of your body? If you have a very, very, very short tongue that you cannot touch your palate with your tongue or you cannot touch your lower lip with your tongue, then there is a possibility that it is a disadvantage. But otherwise, no. I have a really long tongue and that is actually a disadvantage for me because there's much less space for me inside my mouth to move my tongue. And it's much slower because I'm moving something bigger. So if you have a shorter tongue, there is a possibility you can warble faster than other people. I hope that's good news. Yeah, interesting. All right. Okay, yeah, great questions, everyone. Thank you. If you yeah. have more throughout the way, just type them in the chat. Uh, okay, we actually had one more quick. Is it possible yeah. to warble between any two out of the 12 notes in one scale? Very good question. Um, you can adjust the pitch of the beginning note and the ending note. But depending on the technique, the, the exact warbling technique that you're using, those notes, uh, there will be some limitations. Like jumping an octave up and down will be very difficult. But yes, there is a lot of flexibility in what you can use, uh, what you can whistle with warbling. Okay, now let's move on to the second part, which is, you know, the most exciting. Uh, you get to learn how to warble, yeah? <laughs> All right, um, today I'm gonna teach you four different kinds of warbles, okay? And then one extra for your uh for your fun uh one is tongue palate the second number two is tongue lip i don't have a presentation after this so take notes if you need to third one is cheek warbling fourth one is register switching aka breath warbling or throat warbling okay and if you cannot do this today, don't worry. This is a crash course. What's important is to learn what it is doing and how it's done. And you can practice on your own, okay? Because it took me about 10 years to learn all these four. You guys are lucky because I basically, you know, spent 10 years for you to figure this out. So um, I hope you can learn much faster and, you know, master this much faster than I did. And um, yeah, so let's let's go from the tongue palette warbling, which and, is... And Yuki, yep. just, just one thing. Do you want to maybe stop sharing so we can see your video larger? Oh, wait, am I still sharing? Yeah. That is...
a very good call. Can you see me bigger? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Okay. So um, I use my hands to explain these different techniques. Usually the upper hand is the palate. Lower hand is the tongue. Sometimes the upper hand becomes down and becomes the bottom teeth. Okay. This is how I explain things. Tongue palate whistling. Tongue palate whistling. Okay. Do you guys know how to pronounce the alphabet L? La la la. La 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 la. Okay. Your tongue, the tip of your tongue is touching your alveolar. That's the technical term for your gum or slightly behind your gum. La 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 la. Now try to make the L sound longer and make the L and the A the same length. La 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 la. This is what happens when you do a tongue palate warbling. The difficulty is twofold. If you currently whistle with your tongue touching your lower teeth or your lower gum, I think about 60 to 70 percent of you do it this way. You first got to learn how to whistle with your tongue not touching your lower teeth. So floating here. OK. You might need some time to figure this out. Um, you can whistle along while I explain these things. And the second step is to learn how to whistle with your tongue touching the L position. Ooh, ooh. This is much harder. I think about maybe a fourth of you can do it here right now immediately, but you'll sooner or later figure it out. Move, try to move positions like right at your teeth, gums, or slowly, you know, behind, back, top here at the heart palate. Find a place where you can whistle comfortably while touching your palate like the tip of your tongue. Once you got that, okay, let's 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 say you already figured this out, okay? Once you got that, what you're going to do is exactly the same as what we did earlier. You're going to do lu 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 In um, for the recorder, you know the flute, the recorder. It is called the diddle tonguing, because you sound like you're doing diddle 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 diddle. If you like SpongeBob, you might be reminded of an episode um, of Patrick going little 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 little. But uh, if you don't know SpongeBob, then you don't. Um, yeah, so that's the tongue warble. It's very simple. You're just doing L release, L release. And when you release, don't go down to the gum. You got to stay afloat. L release, L release, L release. So this is tongue warbling. OK. If you got it. Great. If not yet. Going to move on to the next one. Tongue lip warbling. This is actually used by so many warbling whistlers. It's crazy how many people can do it because it took me like seven or eight years to figure this out. Um, but the principle is 